occupation, you are a barber, correct? And a life coach. And a life coach. Y'all hear that? He I definitely got to put in the life coach. Like I said, I've been doing a barber for years. Of course, you know, still yeah. do it. But I like my life coaching a lot, too, because get to help. your boy Tori and Hans. I'm the host from the Distorted Cosmos. You know, sometimes I be doing the most. And today we got a very special guest, this man here, Mr. Cotton214. Uh, been knowing this man a long time, like literally like a good portion of my lifetime. This man has been giving me advice, he's been guiding me, he's been shit talking. A lot of you from the summer, y'all you know him from around the way. Mr. Cotton, what's going on, sir? How you man, feeling? I appreciate it, man. God, you made me feel like I was special. I mean, hey, you know, you know, with, with all these phase and everything that you've been blessing these people with. Well, for, man, I appreciate for their it. Life, you I know, appreciate it, bro. Thing. Out here with the host doing the most. Hey, I'm you talking know, about. You know, glad to have you in the studio. Finally, this man hassled me to, even though he could have came at any time, but he hassled me about the personal invite. So we have to be sure we get this personal invite. Kind of personal man. invite. Personal invite. Personal. You know, personal. <laughs> so, yeah, man, I, I I appreciate you, though, man, for the invite, man, and uh, to think of me enough as a person, too, bro. mean a lot. I appreciate yeah. you. Yeah. And I'm proud of you, too. You're doing your job out here, man. Keep pushing. Stay focused. I appreciate it, man. You know, it's, it's uh, as, as a young black man, it, it's a struggle every day to, to just show up. Right. You know, right. uh... Especially, you know, when when people aren't as supportive as they say they are, when um, the the odds are against you, right, you know, right. it, it's just important to still show up, you know, right. and that's that's one thing that I uh, encourage a lot of other young people, man. Like whenever you're getting into something new, something passionate about you, every day you just gotta show up. Right, right, bro. That's man. That's that, that's what it is. Man, I was really. Just sharing that with a person at the gym, man. Um, I told that brother too as well, man. One thing that keeps me going in those moments is no matter what life throws at us, we gotta remember that the Creator we serve see us as royalty. So when you're royalty, no matter what's going on, you know. You remember the old old school church song, "This Little Light of Mine, I'm gonna let it shine." Yes, sir, I do. This and you say everywhere I go, hey. I'm gonna let it shine. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna let it shine. Right, right. <laughs> So, you know, yeah. that's that's the mindset that you got to have, bro. Whether things are going your way, people don't seem as supportive. You can never dim your light for another person. So, regardless if they're supporting, uh, if they're, you know, believe in you, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you got to keep letting your light shine because at the end of the day, your overall creator see enough in you to get another opportunity. So, you got to take advantage. It's very day. true. You know, that that, that plays a very a very good part to uh, what a lot of people call imposter sy syndrome. They'll, they'll fake it and right. dim their light. Right. In order to just being who they are, genuinely who they are, they right. will dim their light in right. order to, to make someone else feel comfortable. Right. They'll, they'll dim their light in order to... You understand. To, I, I, I do. Yeah, because, so see, do. this and that's what I was telling. I was like, bro, why must I bring myself down to a level to just to make you feel comfortable. That's not to sound arrogant or no, cocky. No. It's the fact that since I know who I am, and like I said, I'm going to let my light shine, you ought yeah. to let yours shine. Exactly. You, you know what I'm saying? Be who you are. Regardless right. No of, matter what. Regardless of whose opinion right. is what, regardless of what who, the, the politically correct, right. just be who you are. Right. Let your light shine. Right. If you stop trying to dim your light, right, and or if your light is shining too bright to where it's uh is uh then move around. Or right. those people need to move right. around. Right. You know what, man, my um my my example of that would be to, you know, when I think of royalty, which yeah. we are royalty, I think about gold. You know what I'm saying? That's one thing people that wear gold is shine. And you never wanted to lose the shine, so you gotta get it cleaned up, you know what I'm saying? That's how life is. Sometimes life would take us through something where our goal to kind of get dim, but it's up to us to polish it and keep shining. So yeah. that means the polishing has to come from life situations, it things is. that we're dealing with, and people that we're around sometimes. Sometimes we forget that we're royalty and, and allow people to, you know, uh, uh, dim our shine, bro. But I'm in a 
point and a place in life where I really have a made up mind. And I think that's what it's all about when we're doing things like a this yeah. sort, like you taking, you know, the opportunity to do what you're doing. And I know sometimes you feel discouraged probably because like I say, people ain't supporting, the love ain't there. But man, we got to quit worrying about people. Don't Facts. focus on people. Indeed, indeed. At all. But you know what though? I'm going to take another turn. So you know, I believe a lot of people will just don't know how bright their light can shine. Right, right. You know, um, when a when a diamond is buried or when a diamond is in the process of becoming a diamond, it starts out as a lump of coal. Right. And then it has to have some kind of pressure upon it. Right. And once that pressure upon it that's taking time after time after time, and then someone even once it becomes a diamond, it's still under a lot of pressure. Right. It takes someone to excavate that and then put some value on that right so so when we take people and, and we be like hey man you really ought to change your life you, you you really ought to switch around you really ought to have a positive mindset because you know you can shine bright right. you, you, you you can be that light right but a lot of people are just so used to being in dirt and filth that 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 when you try to bring them up to a place of of higher light or right. a higher vi vibration or letting their light shine. Right. They're like, nah, man, this, this ain't what I'm used to. you like, but you are that. Right. As you said, we're a royalty. Right. We, we are something beautiful. We are amazing creations right. that, are, that are here. Right. But yet some people just are so dumbfounded to, to the beauties of life, to the to the, the the love of life that they just choose to be in this dark, dim place. Well, you know what, man? Uh, when I think of that, brother, this is where that takes me to is you got to realize we live in a, a world where acceptance is golden. Yeah. And so sometimes we find ourselves putting ourselves in situations to where we choose to be accepted by people or a crowd of folk that really may not have our best interest at hand. Mm -hmm. And so when you think about that, that's what I'm saying, sometimes you have to have a made up mind to be the difference maker. You know, this is let me let me share this with you, bro. This is this is my thing about this story, yeah, bro. Yeah. Uh you have you ever heard about the story of the coffee bean? Uh, you can refresh my memory. Okay, okay. Well, you, if, yeah. if you ain't yeah. this is this is just this is just my analogy dealing with how we should be. We're gonna take three elements, a coffee bean, a egg, and a potato, okay? okay. We're gonna coffee put bean, egg, an egg, and a potato. potato, right? We're okay. gonna put a pot of boiling water yeah. on the stove, okay? okay. And when we put the egg that's originally soft on the inside into the boiling water, what does the boiling water do? It turns the egg hard. It makes hard it hard, water. okay? Yeah. Then we take a potato, that starts out hard, put into boiling water, what does it do? It changes. Turns it soft. soft. Yeah. Okay, now if I have a, a pot of boiling water and drop a coffee bean in it, what does that do? You change the whole substance. Change the whole environment. Yeah. So we have to be the coffee bean in our environment and change what's around it and not be a victim of our environment. So a lot of mm -hmm. times we find ourselves putting ourselves in situation and literally not seeing the value in us because we are a victim of our environment. So yes, us as people, especially people of royalty, we have to get to a place to where we we don't mind being the difference maker. We don't mind being as they call the oddball. Like it ain't always about fitting in. You know what I'm saying? It ain't always about doing what's politically correct or right. But if God has given you something, you have to give it. That's like I said, with what you're doing here, bro, yeah. you be the difference maker. Every single time you show up, if ain't nobody here, bro, you what you're doing. Up. Yeah, yeah. So you're the difference maker. So we got to start having that coffee bean outlook. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Be yeah. the coffee bean in your life. Change the environment around you. Right. Be the change. Right. Right. So, right. so in, in the same tone of acceptance... There's a lot of people out here on social media. The old blue check people right. is pissed off at the new blue check people. Right. So what's your opinion on the blue checks? The blue check people? Yeah. Well, man, you know what? I mean, you know, uh, now a blue, a blue check, you know, is You can pay for it. Right. Fourteen ninety nine. Right. Well, you know. you know what? See, this is exactly what I mean about about what I just uh, explained with the yeah. coffee bean. See, we get caught up on the wrong things. If that's what somebody chooses to do to, um, I guess, establish some notoriety, let them do, do that. 
but you keep being who you is and create your own lane and avenue and make it authentic. You know what I'm saying? If, right. if somebody if somebody want to do that to feel important, let them do it. I have, like I said, I do use social media, but I'm not caught up in the really trying to be, um, I guess, approved. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? So tell the people, uh, for, for those who don't know, uh, I don't know if he want to tell y'all or not, but he's really big on TikTok. He really has these morning talks uh, to where he, he has some... This is one lady on there. She made everybody husband, uh, wives husband. Uh, you know, that soft-spoken, cook her husband breakfast. I don't know. So, right. She made everybody reevaluate their whole home living situation. Right. But, right. you know, um, tell the people, like, what's the vibe and tone of your uh, talks in the morning? Okay, well, hey, on TikTok, I'm talk to him. No, cotton talk to him. Is that yeah. it? Yeah. No, I, talk I, to him, cotton. Talk to him, cotton. Talk yeah. to him, cotton is what I am on TikTok. Man, you know what? I actually um, like TikTok because, like you said, the tone, the environment that sit on there, bro, you know, it's not all about, well, what I deal with, it's not all about the dancing. True, you know, true. Um, yeah. I'm uh, involved in a lot of great conversation about building. Uh, about generational wealth, uh, about, of course, you know, um, love, sex, everything. Yeah, yeah. You know, we talk about everything. So the environment we create is definitely something that could be beneficial to people, you know. And I do like the fact that, like I said, it gives you more ways to express yourself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because I, I don't know. It's, and, and you know what? This is what people not realize. You know, the government's trying to be hard on TikTok right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. But you know, Facebook really paid for that. Like, this is what people are not realizing. Facebook is really trying to sabotage because more people have moved to TikTok. And then on Facebook, we can see that it's not the same Facebook. You know, you post, people are not liking as much and stuff. So, you, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, they're trying to drive people towards a particular set of um, things to do on the platforms. Like, right. at first, making posts was all what was the rave about your post to go viral. Right. right. Then but now it's short term short term video. Right. So reels is the big right. thing. And uh here lately I've been doing a lot of stories because I've been getting a lot of re reposts by a lot of authentic blue check people. Right. But it's all in, in the stories basically. It, it's there, it goes, nah, nobody cares. And that's that no, that's that's useful and dope too. The only thing I I don't like about these social media platforms now too, especially Facebook Dog, if I say something wrong or do something wrong, hell, just remind me. Don't, don't, don't make me wait thirty days. days. You know what I'm saying? I'm tired of going to Facebook Man, jail, bro. Until the First Amendment. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, Freedom of speech. Literally but, taking away my First Amendment. Oh my God, but that's bro. why. So somebody said if they can censor the president, right? Nobody else is safe, right? Nobody. But the, that's also one of the issues that they're battling with TikTok is the privacy aspect of it so tiktok is a part of a holding company right. and the holding company is like part of the communist party right. meaning like you have to do what i say or else you know I'm, they, I'm but you general. know if we dig a little bit more facebook is dirtier to be real with you uh i was reading the other so. day facebook have way more violations than tiktok i agree i agree but but they're in-house dirty Right. right. It's right. like we right. in house dirty versus right. a nigga across the street dirty. Right. I don't want you trying to dirty up my own dirty. Right. Let me dirty up me and right. let me clean up my dirt first before you try to come over here into my dirt. Yeah. And, and then expose my, my dirt and try to use that against me. I much right. rather deal deal with deal with in house shit, but I can't either worry about in house shit because I got y'all over. Right. Yeah. Right. So that I get it. Right. Me too. Being, yeah. being a veteran. I I get it. You know, you you kind of don't want to hear about it and to to know what's going on in your household. Right, right. But you know, right. competition, you, yeah. competition. You know, what I'm saying that just like I say, man, with what I do and what you do, this right, what you're doing, there's competition everywhere. But it, is. it just depends on how you're gonna present yourself when yeah. competition arrives. Like, you know, even being in business, I'm in, bro. Like, I don't consider myself like I don't think like other barbers. Yeah. You know, um, most people are threatened by another barber showing up, but I'm wise enough to know, like, this is the mindset we got to have in business. You're not the only one that's doing this. So if you're not the only one that's doing this, that means that, guess what? If somebody else, and you, matter of fact, you may be my customer, but somebody else may be doing something that appeal to you more. I can't 
hold you to or uh, put you in a headlock, make you gotta spend your money with me. You know what I'm saying? Like also, I'm open enough to know that. But also people on have the flip side, there's billions of heads out here. Right. <laughs> right. We all have opportunities. Billions of heads out here. There's beards, there's heads, right. there's ladies, there's right. men. There was cats and dogs. Right. Like, there's plenty of things that need cutting. Right. With that has hair. Right. So, and then let's just like say with with this here, you yeah. know, your your platform is offering something different. Just stay focused on what you got going and see, like I say, people gonna gravitate to what you got. Then those that don't, they you know, they don't exactly. belong with you. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? If they for you, they for you. Right. If they're not for you, they not for you. Right. 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 See, man, we we as people, I think sometimes we create our own hate and drama. Because, like I said, you know, um, when somebody, especially doing something that we're doing, mm -hmm. we scared to literally support. You know, just like you were just saying, you know, some people. And it, and sometimes it'd be the closest people to you. You know, that's one thing I've noticed, too, as well. But that's like I said, I'm in a mindset now, bro, to where, honestly, like I said, with a made-up mind, bro, I'm not letting anybody or anything detour me from what God has put in me. Yeah. So that means either, like I said, again, you're with me or you're against me. I don't have a middle. It's zero to a hundred. You either... All for you, or all, I ain't gonna say all against, but even if I am against you, I'm not gonna be rude to you. But you're not gonna stop what God has put in me. So, you know, that's why I tell you, bro, just keep pushing. Keep pushing, bro. Like, yeah. we have to have that mindset. You know, when I think about you too, as well, brother, like I said, I wanna, you know, give you some flowers while you're here as well, bro. You know, you, yeah. you out here, uh, man, very courageous, you know what I'm saying? You know, bro. Even though you have a speech impediment, you get up and do you do this. Most people will be, yeah. be scared. You know what I'm saying? And you know, scared of what people are gonna say, laugh, and all that, bro. You've always been that that type of where I watch it say grow up, bro. You just been you and also too, bro, just watching you as a father. You a dope father, bro, you know, dope husband, all that. So I gotta give you your props, you know what I'm saying? And I appreciate it. And that's the reason why every day I show up is because if you haven't already, you need to identify your why. Right. Why do you get up and do things? Why do you move? Why do you have a thrill for life? My children. Right. My children. The fact that I brought these kids into this world, I want to be able to set them up with a better opportunity than I had. Right. Because right. I'm trying to arm them with the proper skills. That way, when they're faced with some of the things they're faced with, they don't have to figure it out right. as harsh as I did. Right. I right. mean, I'm at least going to give you, I didn't have a blueprint. Right. Any of this shit. Oh man, <laughs> right? we definitely we, didn't have a, a, a blueprint. We, we didn't have oh a blueprint for this. Oh but, my god! But if I can say, hey, here's a starter out of kit. Right. You know. Right. It, imagine the other people who got a generational head start right. and where they are versus us. Right. Imagine if we would have had some knowledge embarked to us at a very young age, backed by some money. Right, right. You know what, though? But the fact that we're saying that, though, and didn't let that be an excuse of why not try to break a cycle, you know, that's the beauty of it. Because yeah. um, I think what we have to do as people, too, bro, the first thing about growth is accountability. Yes. You know yes. what I'm saying? So as long as we're taking accountability, you know, um, for ourselves and even for what we've been through and changing the outcome and the outlook for our kids or even just for ourselves personally, bro. I think that's the biggest and greatest thing we can do. Like I can spend all day and tell you a thousand reasons why, you know, man, my upbringing was trash. You know, dad wasn't, you know, mm -hmm. what he's supposed to be, you know, but guess what? I don't want to focus on it. What I want to focus on is my growth. Like yeah, I'm growth. accountable for me. I'm not making excuses why so like I say we have to be the difference maker bro so you know it's as long mean. as we keep that mindset and outlook bro our kids would be great you know what I'm saying but also too like say man don't you know even in that what I've learned too bro the other thing that we have to um get to as people dealing with kids and dealing with people bro is three things we gotta respect other people's opinion know how yeah. to communicate effectively and comprehend Man, we got a comprehension is what keeps retention. <laughs> I tell people, all the, I, for a lot of y'all who've met me in the past, I tell y'all, communication rules the nation. Oh, yes. But comprehension yeah. is what keeps the retention. Right, right, That's what, that's what right. makes motherfuckers stay and come back because they understand right. you. They see where you're coming from. Right. And they can see the vision. And we cope with steady. 
Right. And you know yeah. what, like I said, even that, just to go back to my, my first point, yeah. was accountability. Think how much different the world would be if we was accountable. And this is what I mean by that. You know, even we think about um, situations that deprive in relationships, friendships, business, and everything, right? Yeah. When something goes wrong, a person always want to argue why they're right. And then you taking the argument, it's arguing back in why they're wrong, right? Yeah. So what happened if us as people, we come together, start taking accountability for what we done and learn how to communicate effectively without trying to dog out the other person, bro. Like, I think we could save a lot of relationships, friendships, businesses, relationships with our kids and everything. You know what I'm saying? We're just a conversation. Right. We, we, we just, some, hey, I was wrong here. Right. Here's where I fucked up. Right. Right. Here's what I did. Right. You know, right. Like this was part of the problem. Right. But, devil's advocate. Right, but you know what? Right. <laughs> but, <laughs> There's hey. a lot of people who argue with me, and I know got that well. I'm right. All right, right. All but right. you know what, though? <laughs> and you know, and and this is this is what I've learned too, bro. We have to realize too that even in our rightness, as we feel our rightness is, yeah. What makes us different as people is we all have different experiences. Mm -hmm. So what you feel is right, not saying it's wrong, but maybe the person that you're dealing with, you know, when they, the way they grew up, that didn't look like that exactly. to, to them. Exactly. So, so what I've learned how to do is when I'm communicating, we have to, and see, bro, and this, I'm telling you, God has shown some thing. When we're communicating with people, bro, it takes a lot for communication that we don't think about. Watch, watch this, like how we sitting here right, right here yeah. talking, right? I don't know how your night was. I don't know how your morning was, right? Exactly. And exactly. I could say something right now, a matter of fact, the way my morning night went, it could come out in a harsh manner, right? Mm -hmm. And you may think that I'm trying to be rude towards you and you'll come back and attack me, but guess what? We're sitting here not even understanding what affected us to even sound the way that we, exactly. we, we sound. Exactly. Right. So that that is one of the things that I wrote about in my, my, my upcoming book called right. the, the Three Ring Theory. Right. One of the things is um, your, your mindset and your thoughts and your actions are often affected by your environment. Right. And not only just your environment, right. but the people around you. Right. And then it even goes so far to affect the outer appearance and your in your ego right. because when someone um attacks your mind uh that's putting you in a treacherous space right you know then sometimes you may have to defend your ego your right. your, your your some people have to defend their masculinity right. at times uh you got the feminist who have to stand up against them <laughs> you got the at the uh LGBTQ community, they got to stand up and be defended, you know. I mean, everybody has something right. that we all have, it, but it, and that's because we all live life at a different perspective. So the way you see the world versus the way I see the world right. is one thing. But like as you said, your personal experiences from your whole entire life to just this morning right. to two minutes ago right. could could affect shape the way, right. Yeah, it, right. it, it, it could shape and affect a lot of things the same way a conversation happens. Right. The back and forth is a cause and reaction. Right. Right. I say something, you respond. You say something, I respond. It's right. a conversation. Right. The, the effects with people are the same way. So yes, right now we may be, you know, feeling a certain kind of way, uh, happy or smooth, go lucky. But I said, you know, our experiences are very de derivative of. They they dictate so much, right, right? So so much. So definitely get that, man. Like, let me let me let me ask you something too, because yeah. I, I I have to ask because you brought it up. Yeah. I think a lot of time too, bro. This is just my opinion. Yeah, yeah, my yeah. opinion. This is no disrespect to any movement. Say the masculinity, feminine, uh, the edgy. Yeah, yeah. All the communities, right? Whoever, uh, you whoever like personally, I mean, because watch, watch this, watch this, bro. Even, even in life, right? Let's go back to relationship too, as well. You know how men get the bitter end of the stick, right? We're normally oh, called narcissists. We call all of this, right? Yeah. So this is my thing, bro. We get so caught up on tags and titles and labels, labeling, titling people, certain things. And I think, bro, that this is really a distraction from us to be able to grow. And this is why I'm saying this, bro. Um, I don't have to title myself a masculine man if who I am shows you that. 
You see what I'm saying? Yeah. A feminine woman don't have to yell how feminine she is, you know, if she's in a, you know, she's acting feminine. You know what I'm saying? So what I feel like these movements can do sometimes, bro, is distract us from learning how to come together. And watch this. Again, when I was talking about the relationship and, you know, like women call men, uh, um, they say we're, we're narcissists, you know, and, you know, dogs and all this, right? Yeah. So can we really... Can we honestly, bro, when you really think about this, can we tag and title anybody if we are responsible and accountable for our own self? See, this is where accountability comes into in these conversations because, like I said, man, we get we, we get comfortable with tagging and titling people certain things, but in all honesty, right, a person will only do and be what you allow them to do and be to you. So someone, I have to be accountable for what I allow you to do. So I can't say, hey, you know what? You a narcissist because guess what? I knew damn well and I knew better. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, since I'm saying this is what you are, that means I have an understanding and the meaning of what that word means, right? So if anything remind you, you, you should. Right. You should right. know what something is before you call somebody. Something. Right. You should know before you speak. So if you don't know what a narcissist is, you shouldn't call someone a narcissist. But if or I'm a narcissist, if you know right? those, those, those traits, then right. you have to experience that before. Right. Right. Either, right. either via you right. or via someone else. So via you are the narcissist as well. Right. For even trying to identify my narcissism. Right. So yeah. so so look, my my thing is right, and uh, this 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 is another point I was making to somebody. Like, make this make sense to me. Like, say you say uh, a woman to say I got with a man, he was a dog, he didn't have these bags, such and such and this and this, right? So, what would you expect from a man that grew up in a house whose father was a pimp, mother was a hoe? Would you think that that man would be fit for a woman who grew up in a a, a mother father home that was you know religious based, grown up? So. This is the point that I'm making. Sometimes we put ourselves in situations dealing with certain people because we're with them for the moment because the void that they're feeling. And once that void is filled, then we start noticing, like, say, all the red flags. I tell you all the time, the red flags was always there. But because we wanted something and they was giving us a feeling or feeling that void that we had, then we find ourselves dealing with them. Then, like, say, when they hurt us, all of a sudden we want to call them everything in the book. But you allowed that. Is I believe... Giving people the opportunity right. will solve that issue. No, nope. yes. Like, if you, me personally, right. I know when I went into my current marriage, right. I told my wife I'm full of shit. Right. I said, I ain't gonna lie to you, baby, I'm full of shit. I've been through a lot of things. I've been, <laughs> I, I, I did this, I've done, done that. I'm just tired. I said, but I'm giving you the choice. Right. I'm giving you the right. you the option, you know. Right. I'm not saying I'll be this forever, but right. this is who I am right now. I was coming out of my second divorce. Right. I was coming home from overseas. Right. So I was getting out of the military when I didn't want to. Uh, I was splitting up from my, my kids. I was going through a lot of bullshit. So I, I was a messed up person. Right. So I told her, hey, right now. Was honest. I'm, I'm honest. Right. But do you believe in when people are self-aware of who they are, that they should tell their other Having person. dealt with their traumas, how do you expect for them to treat you or to be towards you? Or what happened when those traumas come back up in, in the relationship? And guess what? If you never asked and you never knew, and then you're dealing with a damaged person, you damaged, as the world call it, two toxic people getting together, yeah. that's not going to work. Like, we, like how honest she was, bro, Yeah, that's what people need to start doing. But also, too, it's our exactly. responsibility to ask, who the hell are you? Exactly. You Not only who you are, but it's your responsibility to know who you are. Right, definitely. Right? I mean, that's yeah. on to both, be, both sides. To be self-aware. Right. And once you're self-aware of yourself, right. I believe that that's a way to acknowledge the other person. Right. And, right. you know, to see if they're self-aware. Right. Especially if you see some shit, and then, you know, if you see the way that someone is moving or whatever, you be like, hey, yo, you know, it's your father? You know, right. You know, it's your mother? Right. And they, oh, well, you know, we don't ask yeah, so so I, 
You need to ask questions. Right, because it's like, you know, we get caught up in a physical aspect 99% of the time. You know, big hips, fat ass, you know, woman thing. Man, Tall, you know, got a, got, right. got a little money, drive a nice car, maybe, you know, can lay some pipe, and then that's just the extent of it until the honeymoon is over. Then when the honeymoon is over, looking back, like I said, all those red flags was there from the jump, but your ass overlooked it because you was trying to fill a void in your life. That's what we have to be honest with ourselves and understand, you know, from the traumas and past hurt when they arrive, what have we done? What have we done to heal ourselves? You know what I'm saying? And, and you know what? I say this all the time. That Erica Badu song, Bag Lady, is such a goddamn, uh, it's like the song, if you listen to it, yeah. bro, it has great meaning because a lot of us are still carrying that bag and it's open. We still dumping shit in it that still got old shit in it. So I got a question. Do you think people is getting in relationships for uh, security reasons? Or do you think people are actually really in love? Talking about nowadays? In general? Period. Shit. Then, now. Relationships has no value now. <laughs> Just the way it, I it's see it. from a married man. Damn. Uh, I'm saying you married. Right. I mean, it just... Bro, because, see... Bro, at the end of the day, fam, it's just like I'm saying, bro. We don't value life, love, or relationships. And it's a doggy dog world out here, bro. I'm not going to lie to you. And then what makes it that much more worse is because we're selfish nature. Yeah. So since we're selfish nature, my selfish desires will cause me to do shit that'll hurt you. You know what I'm saying? See, this, bro, this is, this is my theory right here, y'all. This is for y'all right here. This is going to help somebody. Yeah. Quit. Chasing after love. I know this is uh, this is maybe a shock to her. So what they gotta chase? But huh? So what they gotta chase? Yeah, I'm I'm finna break this shit down for you. I'm finna break it down for you. Check this out. Love has a strong, uh, not I'm sorry, not the strongest, but the longest stream of hurt behind it. Watch this. A person will cheat on you and say what? I love you, right? They will. A person that kick in a fucking don't kill everybody because of love, right? Love is the yeah. city of LA. Love Nipsey Hussle. And look what happened to him. Killed him. Right? Oh, love, right? Yeah. Okay, Negroes go to church every Sunday and say how much they love the Lord and still sin, right? They do. Okay, so now this is what I've learned because this is the factor that's missing in this. The factor is respect. Check this out. Have you ever heard a person say, "Man, I killed him because I respect him"? You ever heard that? You ever say, hey, man, I cheated on you today because I respect you. God, I'm going to sin today because I respect you. So this is what I mean by that, bro. Once we learn how to respect ourselves and people respect who we are, then love would never hurt because they will learn how to love you properly. So I'm not saying love is not a great thing to go after, but what I'm saying is learn to respect yourself first and make a person respect you to where they'll love you properly. So that's my, my way of going. I'm not chasing after love first. You know what I'm saying? The respect. The respect aspect of things. Right. Yeah. Right. And everything else to follow. Fall into the, the place. So now, when you think about our community of people, we so big on love. Like, literally. But words of respect. If we look at ourselves now, are we respecting ourselves and things we do? Like I said, we have no respect for life. We have no respect for values. We have no respect for relationships, friendships, anything. Because at any time, your, your partner said, man, that's my dog, bro. I show sure love you, but then they'll cross your ass. But if I respect you, am I going to cross you? Mm -mm. Not only cross you, but be in your bed. Right. As soon as, soon as you, you being a real, real nigga. Right. You wind up in jail. Now that's that same brother, homie, love you, respect you. Don't you respect house. you. So, see, mm. that's the way I think when it comes to this shit. I don't want you to love me first, respect me, because then I know that I can trust you with me. Yeah. You, see, you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. But, bro, I have shit. Boy, love, love. As a matter of fact, I know we can all can attest to this in all honesty. And that's why even with relationships, I never tell a person to go, never tell a person to stay. Because love will put you through some shit you never thought you could put up with or go through. And then your friend can, man, you should leave him, man, you should leave, you should leave. And they'll find your ass right back with that, that person. That's yeah. why I never get in the middle of telling a person to leave or, 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 or go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I I I I've told some people to leave some people. Somebody's whooping your ass. I <laughs> advocate don't stand around and get your ass whooped in the name of love. Step back. Right. And, right. And, and get that relationship some space. Getting your ass whooped. Right. Well, well, but you know what? No. But you know what? But say, bro. bro but, go ahead. Go look, ahead. Look. So in the military. Right. My ex-wife. Right. She was. 
she was abusive to me. Right. So I had to call the police on her. Right. Because had I not, I would have... Uh, you would have went to jail. I would have went, went to jail and lost my right to carry a right. weapon, which right. therefore got me kicked out of the military. Right. If I get kicked out of the military, I wouldn't have my benefits. Right. So it was like a slippery slope. Right. But she was a very combative person. Right. And it was... Go and it was towards the end of things, so I was like, yo, I don't think this is going to work. So therefore, I know these people around us hear what's going on. Right. So if they call the police, it's automatically, the, you know, right. the, the state of Texas against me. Right. So that's why I, I advocate, hey, right. somebody's just trying to whoop your ass or is whooping your ass or is, is abusing you in any kind of way, get, get that shit some space. Okay, but back, look back. at this, look yeah. at this. Now, this is, the, this is the other side of this. Yeah. Some people look at getting their ass whooped as love. Because we know some women that, that get their ass beat yeah. and swept and down that the man loves. So like I said, that's why I say, but we have, to, we have to be open to other people's outlook on life. Even if it's some trauma shit like that, but that's normal to some people, bro. So that you had a per to Right, that and that's how my son and mother was, bro. And that's why I was like, yo, no, right. man, I can't be a part of it. If you think that right. I have to love right. you, I have to hit you right. and love you. Right. I'm like, no, no, I'm, I'm not that type of guy. Right, and look, I'm not saying don't tell a person to leave because that is the right thing yeah. to do, but how many people do we know that stay in an abusive relationship because, like I said, to them, a black eye is what they call love. That's not love. Right. Love but, shouldn't be pain, that's but painful. But that's people. <laughs> that's people. Love should so, be painful. Love yeah. should, should, in my definition, love is is warm. Right. It's inviting. Right. It's, it's something that I don't have to think about. It's not violent. Right. It's a, it, it's something that makes you feel generally good and whole. Right. So, if you go home and you don't feel those things. Right. Well, again, too, see, that's where when you respect yourself, again, go back to the respect. Point, yeah. That's how a person will never cross those lines. They can then they can love you properly. And then, ladies, let me get y'all a, a a nugget like a motherfucker. Yeah. If you want your man to love you properly, you have to respect a man. First, do. men move do. off of respect. And I ain't saying be disrespectful to a woman. What I'm saying is for a man to be respected, that's what makes a man love you properly. Like the Bible even said, said as that. It's you know so what I'm hardly true. As right. a man who's been married three times, the, the respect that aspect of things right. is definitely um, what keeps a man at home, ladies. Right, right. So, you know, yeah, man, you know, we just got to um, understand our value, bro. Like, just going back to what this conversation started out, bro, will royalty. Yeah. We have to walk in our royalty, bro, and let people recognize and realize that's who and what we are, bro, is royalty. Like, never sell yourself short for anybody in anything you're doing out here. You're a rapper, whatever the hell you want to do, you're royalty. Walk in your royalty, believe in yourself, push it. You know that was I mean? one of the things that over the event, we was uh, I said that I noticed that uh, a lot of the um, artists weren't, weren't sh sharing the the uh, flyers for them. Right. I'm like, yo, have somebody to come and see you. Like, this is your art. Right. You have right. good art. Right. Invite the people for invite you to come, come. see Right. You. But I definitely understand when you invite people and you expect these people to support you. Right. And they be like, oh, yeah, man, I support you. And they don't show up for you. Right, right. So, but so you know. I get it. But. Still show up for you. That's why I showed up for you. <laughs> you show you show up for you, and and be, be people like this will right. show up for you. Right, the same way you bro. show up for them, Definitely. and then everybody, you know, then people will start showing up for you. Right. Why? Because y'all respect each other. It's right. a mutual respect. It's our love. It's our gritty. So before we end this podcast, by occupation, you are a barber, correct? And a life coach. And a life coach. Y'all hear that? He, I definitely got to put in the life coach. Like I said, I've been doing a barbering for years. Of course, you know, still yeah. do it. But I like my life coaching a lot, too, because you get to help people. And every time somebody sit in that chair, right. I guarantee you that them life coping skills get <laughs> They come get out. Get, get <laughs> sharp. They, they come out, bro. I just, bro, I can't lie to you, bro. I just want to see us as people succeed, bro. And, and like I said, understand who we are, bro, because we are so far behind, bro. And um, 
I just, I just want you to know that you are somebody. Like if somebody probably waking up today, dealing with depression and everything, bro, just want to end it all. But now you're royalty, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's my overall message. No matter what, somebody care about you. You know what I mean? Indeed. Somebody d does care about right. you. Speaking of right. caring about you, what if somebody out there was teetering on thinking about be becoming a barber, but they wasn't quite sure? What, uh, what kind of inspiration would you give those young if they're not sure but they want to be again yeah. believe in yourself believe in your craft it's always quality over quantity you know what i'm saying um you know you got to believe in what you're doing and uh, i was sharing this with somebody else today you know um, when a person sit in my chair I vision myself, meaning what would I want me to look look like. So I know you represent me. You are my walking billboard. So I have to, you know, my representation, which you are, I have to make sure I do right by you. And the quality will bring quantity, but also, too, you know, uh, again, just believe in yourself. Something you want to do, just make it happen. You know what I'm saying? you got to quit all the doubt because doubt can build up on us and we'll give up quick on our dreams. But... You got to keep pushing, bro. You got to keep pushing. You most definitely got to keep pushing. All right, man. Well, uh, anything else you, you be before we get out of here, where can the people find you? Uh, on Instagram, I'm Cotton214. Uh, that's where I be at. So, no, I'm always on TikTok, though. I ain't going to lie to you. Yeah. So talk to them, Cotton. T-A-L-K-E-M-C-O-T-T-O-N. Follow me on TikTok because that's where I am all the time doing live streams. Uh, I have a lot of, you know, videos, uh, uh, encouraging videos. So I would much rather y'all follow me on TikTok. Talk to TikTok, them. Talk, take it to TikTok. Right. <laughs> Look at that. I just hit 3,000 followers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> turn up, turn up. Definitely a milestone. She's speaking right. of followers. It's your boy Distorted Cosmos, and I'm just trying to get up to a thousand on this. <laughs> I'm at like 996 last time I checked. Instagram, I'm probably like at 1500. I don't even be on that much. Yeah. But Now, my other Instagram, my personal Instagram, uh, I think I'm at, yeah, about 15 something. Okay. But, uh,. Okay. Yeah. Keep pushing. Yeah, exactly. Keep you, pushing. You, you, yeah, you can get them, them numbers up. And look, remember, this is the thing. This this one thing I learned about this, y'all. Quit always looking for the numbers. Yeah. Think about the one person that you can touch and change. Think about them engaged. If you do that, then yeah. your job for that day is done. Exactly. Literally. Which is why you got to stay consistent. Right. Once you stay consistent. Somebody watching. Up, somebody watching. Right. Once the same people seeing that information, there's consistency. They seeing the post. They seeing the real. They seeing the inspiration. Right. They, 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 they seeing the grind. They Right. Hey, I'm going to just say this and I'm done. I'm going to shut up. Yeah. But remember this, y'all. Sometimes you may be the only Bible that people read. So what I mean by that mm -hmm. is they're watching your life. You are an example for them. So the way you handle certain situations, business-wise, uh, when the world is crashed down, on, remember, somebody's always watching. So always try, like I said, to walk in royalty because somebody may need you to be that example for them. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Well, save my guy. I'm Hallelujah. And on that note, we finna head out again. This your boy Tori Hines. I'm the host of Distorted Cosmos. You know, sometimes I be doing the, the most. most. Yes, and sir. And this is my man, Mr. Cotton, right here. He's my barber. He's been my barber for like man. twenty some odd years. So we finna go ahead on the clock out, man. You don't forget to go follow him on Instagram. Don't forget to follow him on TikTok. You damn sure can't catch him early morning. What about about eight o'clock? Whenever you need me. Yeah, by, yeah, by, by, by 8 or 9 o'clock in the morning. Depend on the day. On Saturdays at 6 o'clock. See, Saturdays. It's, right. it's 6 o'clock. Are you talking about the shop time? Oh, okay. TikTok? What you talking about? I'm talking about on TikTok. Oh, oh on, yeah. on TikTok? Yeah. Man, it's just whenever I feel like we But yeah, yeah between between 8 and 12. 8 and 12. Usually the early right. day, you usually be on there. Right. Rocking but out. Yeah. You need a haircut. Right. God damn. You need, say. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Hey, it's a, it's a couple yeah. days old, but he, he's you know, still rocking that. You know, y'all came that. to the show this week yeah. on March 25th. I appreciate you, know. you, brother. You definitely know what it was. For your support, bro. You definitely always. know what it was. I Friendship, all that, my man. guy. Much love, man. Appreciate you. Much love. This. Much love to y'all. Appreciate y'all. And we out. Out. Appreciate it, my brother. Nah, nah, man. Appreciate you, brother.
Hey, yo, that's yo, my that's man, Cotton, right, right there, yo. yo. I hope you I enjoyed hope you the podcast. podcast. Don't forget don't to like, like comment, comment, subscribe, subscribe and, share. and share. Comment your, comment favorite, your favorite part, part down, down below. below. And look, thank, thank you for being you here, here with us. us. Y'all stay, stay tuned, tuned for the next one.